Hello. Today we'll be studying ratios and proportions. As always, take notes and show all of the examples. Let's begin. So our first thing to take into account is ratios. Ratio is two things, numbers or quantities, compared to each other. So I do want you to record this definition. And then also ratios are used to make comparisons between two things. When we express ratios in words, we use the word to. We say the ratio of something to something else. So I want you to record that as well. The ratio of something to something else. For example, the ratio of footballs to basketballs or the ratio of running plays to passing plays. So I want you to record this one as well. The ratio of footballs to basketballs. Ratios can be written in several different ways, as a fraction, using the word to, or with a colon. So record this piece as well. And these are the examples. This is your uh, colon. So record that example. Three, two, three, two, one is the using the word two. And then three to one, again, still saying three to one with a fraction. But they all represent the same ratio, three balls to one other item. Ratios can be written in several different ways, as we've mentioned, fractions using the words two or colon. So we're going to do an example of writing the ratio all three different ways. For this example, we have six footballs and we have seven soccer balls. So the question is the ratio of footballs to soccer balls. So we're going to make sure you list footballs to soccer balls in that order. So footballs, there are six footballs to seven soccer balls. And you don't have to write six footballs. You have to put six to seven in, in that order. I can also write it as six colon seven or six fraction seven. They all represent the same ratio of six footballs to seven soccer balls. So here's some more examples. There are three boys and seven girls in a class. So again, we would have boys first, girls second. So three to seven, three to seven, or three slash seven. Pencils, there are, sorry, there are 10 pens and 15 pencils. So 10 pens, 15 pencils. So 10 to 15, 10 to 15, and 10 slash 15. You'll find out as we get going further that you will be expected to reduce this fraction or this relationship. So you can simplify this by saying there are two pens per three pencils, but we'll get to that later in the unit. And you can do this example if you'd like to. The next piece of information are proportions. Proportions occur when you have two ratios set to be equal to each other. So do record that note. Proportions are when you have two ratios set to be equal to each other. So in this scenario, you decide to paint your bedroom. While you're getting the paint mix, you determine the ratio is three pots blue to one pot white. That's the color you want to develop for your painting. So that ratio is three to one. So the example has you saying drag the correct cans. So for this one, we want three pots blue for one white. So I'm going to put one, two, three. So we have three pots of blue and one for white. Well, this is only for one wall. So if I were wanting... So to write this mathematically, we have our three blue to one white. Or if I wanted to have two walls painted, and this is for one wall, I would have to double it because I'm doing two walls. So no longer would I have just three blue, I would have six blue and two white. And the other way to write that, and this is where I, uh, I prefer fractional uses of this, because if I have three to one as my original value, and I want to double this to two walls, I can multiply each of my units by two. 
so that I have 6 and 2. So we still get the same value of 6 blue, and I'll label it this time to 2 white. But it's a lot easier in fraction form to show that relationship. Likewise, if I have my original 3 blue to 1 white, and I go to the store and they have 12 cans of blue, well, I can say, I'll buy the 12 cans of blue. Well, then I'm like, well, how many cans of white do I need? So I can figure out three to, how did I get from my, think of it as equivalent fractions. How did I get from three to 12 using multipl multiplication or division? Well, I multiplied. I multiplied by four. And again, with fractions, what you do to the top, you do to the bottom and vice versa. So if I multiply by four to get to 12, I'm going to do the same to the bottom. And that tells me I'll need to buy four cans of white. Okay, let's go to another example. So this time it says, if two gallons of something, we'll stick with paint, costs this much, how much would five gallons cost? What is the general idea to solve this problem? Well, two gallons, I and mean, obviously it's not paint because paint's more expensive than $5 for two gallons. But if two gallons cost $5.40, five gallons would cost how much? Um, so then we would, you know, create our ratio again. I would write, using my fractional piece, 2 over 5, and 2 gallons is 540. So I want to know how do I get my value over here. So I'm going to use my calculator and figure out how did I get from 2 to $5.40. Actually, I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to do the math over here. So I'm going to divide by 2, and I get, oh, bring down my 4. So it turns out that to get, um, to get to 540, I multiplied by $2.70. So I did the same thing to my 5, five gallons. So I find out that $5 times 270, sorry, let me rewrite it the other way, it makes sense for me, 270 times 5, thirteen, and I have one decimal, so it would cost dollars and 50 cents for five gallons. I can back it up and know that uh, that one gallon costs 270. If two gallons cost this, I can back up and know that one gallon costs 270 and go from there. Okay, next example. In math class, the ratio of passing grades to failing grades is 7 to 5. That's not my math class. It's 7 to 5 of, fail, of passing to failing. So passing, just for it to make sense to me, passing and failing. So there are 7 kids that pass and 5 kids that fail. So if I were to increase that relationship, and I said if there are... 21 kids that passed. Well, how do I get from 7 to 21? I multiply by 3. And do the same thing to your bottom number. And that shows me that if this relationship were to continue, this proportion continued, that I would have 21 kids that passed and 15 that failed. And that actually shows me that wasn't my intent, but the question says of how many of the 36 students failed the course? Well, this number, if you add up the number of students here for 7 and 5, that's the original 12 students. Well, if you add up these students, 21 students that passed, 15 that failed, that's 36 students. So that answers the question of how many failed. So that would 15 would be the answer for the number failed. And that's just increasing that relationship until you got to 36 students. Um, and we'll continue working with ratios. But just think of ratios and proportions as equivalent fractions. What you do to the top, you do to the bottom, and you can go from there. Let me um, erase this and do a few more 
examples. If I have two ball, two, let's say, soccer balls, and I have seven tennis balls. From here, I can figure out whatever relationship that I want to find out. If I uh, know that I have, I need to have a hundred soccer balls for this clinic I'm going to have. And I'm trying to keep the same ratio for the other side of the clinic, the tennis kids. So if I know that I need to now have 100 balls, if I do 2 times 50, that equals 100. Well, I'll do the same, same relationship to the bottom, 7 times 50, which tells me I'll need 350 tennis balls for that same camp that needs 100 soccer balls. And you just keep, like I said, equivalent fractions. That's all you're trying to do is keep them as equivalent fractions.